Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video will present the semi-week supervised learning framework presented by research at Facebook's AI Research Lab. This framework is a really interesting extension to their previous work on weak supervision, such as using the hashtags and Instagram images as a weak supervised signal to pre-train uh, image net classification models. This research is going to extend this idea to integrate semi-supervised learning as well as weekly supervised learning, and then introduce a lot of other interesting ideas like incorporating model distillation into this framework and looking at class imbalance evident in these unlabeled data sets. This video will present the research paper, Billion Scale Semi-Supervised Learning for Image Classification, from researchers at Facebook AI Research Lab. This animation from Facebook's blog post on Billion Scale Semi-Supervised Learning shows the idea of their semi-supervised training framework before integrating weak supervision. So in this case, their take on semi-supervised learning is different from other uh, definitions of semi-supervised learning, such as rotating an image and then predicting the rotation angle, or something like word to vec or wave to vec, where you mask out certain parts of the sequence and then train a model to predict the missing part of the sequence. This idea of semi-supervised learning is to have a labeled data set such as the ImageNet uh, data set, train a large capacity model like a ResNex 101 uh, 32 by 40 AD, the group convolutions ResNex architecture, and then use this uh, massive high capacity model to predict the labels on an unlabeled data set. And then you would use these unlabeled, uh, the softmax distribution of these predictions to pre-train the target model, i.e. as in model distillation, such as what powers uh, models like Hugging Faces uh, distill BERT. Then you'll fine tune the uh, model that's been trained with model distillation on the labeled data set, and this is your new model. So one of the interesting things we already see about this is the novel use of model distillation as semi-supervised learning. It's not really common to use these two uh, terms together, semi-supervised learning and model distillation. Also interestingly is we can see this kind of uh, model compression that arises from this framework. You can have a really high capacity teacher model like the ResNex 101 32 by 48D, and then you can have a lower capacity, more uh, manageable, probably faster inference time, lower storage costs like the ResNet 50 that you could deploy on mobile and IoT and these kinds of things. This animation shows the extension from the semi-supervised training framework to semi-weekly supervised training. So in this case, instead of having some massive unlabeled data set, we have a weekly supervised data set. So instead of just having a collection of images, we have a weak label, such as the hashtags on Instagram images. And so the thing with the weekly supervised hashtags on Instagram images is that they're really uh, subjective, they're noisy, they're not really uh, like as precisely labeled as, say, the data from ImageNet. So in this model, we're going to pre-train the teacher model, same idea of having some larger capacity teacher model, smaller capacity student network. So we're going to pre-train it with the weekly supervised data set, uh, fine tune it with the image net. Then we're going to use the fine tune model after having been pre-trained to predict the softmax distribution over the weekly supervised data set. And then we're going to use this model distillation, knowledge distillation in order to train our student network. We're going to fine tune the student network and then we have our trained model. Some of the interesting issues their research paper raises is this idea of class imbalance in unlabeled weekly supervised data sets. So one characteristic of machine learning models and you know, deep learning convolutional uh, image classifiers is that class imbalance can really destroy the performance. So for example, if you're training a cat versus dog image classifier and you have 80% uh, of your data, your training data is cats and 20% is dogs, your trained model is going to want to predict cats. It's going to be biased towards the uh, imbalanced data. So in these weekly supervised data sets, such as hashtags on Instagram images, and then trying to transfer that into image net classification, there's gonna be uh, like a, a long tail distribution where you're not gonna have as many of these uh, really specific classes in image net contained in this image net data set. So another interesting idea is just uh, incorporating model distillation in the semi-supervised learning, this uh, teacher student model compression, and then this framework is gonna achieve 81.2% image net top one accuracy with a ResNet 50, and they're gonna scale this up to the ResNex 101.32x16d with the uh, student network capacity, and they're gonna achieve 84.8%. And this is up from 84.2 from their previous research on uh, doing a lot of label engineering for the weekly supervised Instagram data set. And then in that previous study, they had achieved uh, 85.4, but it is a larger capacity model with the 48D. And they probably didn't test the 48D because you know it, it's expensive and time consuming to train these kinds of models. This research from Facebook's AI Research Lab is in line with a lot of their other work, such as uh, using weekly supervised pre-training for video action recognition, using over 65 million images collected from Instagram, as well as using billions of images in their weekly supervised pre-training of an ImageNet image classifier. In this case, they do achieve a slightly higher uh, performance, but they do have larger capacity models. And also interestingly is that in this case, they are manually doing the, uh, you know, kind of removing some of the noise from the weak supervised data set, whereas this framework is going to present an automated way, automated way of doing this. An interesting characteristic of the newest uh, semi-weak supervised training framework is they're going to use an explicit algorithm to balance the classes in the uh, predicted distribution from the weekly supervised data set. So this teacher model has been trained on the ImageNet classification task, but the weekly supervised data set 
probably isn't as balanced as ImageNet classification. It's probably heavily skewed sort towards some classes more than others, such as dogs and things like that, compared to these really specific things like, I don't know, a tiger shark or things like this. So this visualization shows the top K scoring of examples. So as the uh, teacher model predicts a distribution of class labels over the unlabeled data or the weekly labeled data, the um, models are gonna be ranked according to their probability, their class probability, and then they're going to be balanced in this way so that each uh, class has an even number of training samples. And in this visualization, you see how as it goes from rank 1000 to being uh, very close to the uh, image, like the leaf beetle looks like the beetle, whereas by rank 10,000, 16,000, it's not really a beetle anymore, but the uh, teacher model has given some probability to beetle when it's uh, predicting the distribution of that image. Another interesting issue with this uh, framework that's raised in the paper is the idea of inference time with model distillation. So in this case, we're predicting over a billion unlabeled or weekly labeled images with our teacher uh, model. So we want to have fast inference time for this prediction. It's much more important in this case than it is for typical examples of model distillation where the data sets aren't that large. When you have billions of images, you want to make sure the teacher model has fast inference. I think with the rising popularity of knowledge distillation, model distillation techniques, such as Hugging Faces, Distill Bird, and now uh, Facebook's semi-weekly supervised training paradigm, we're going to see these kinds of inference accelerators like NVIDIA's Tensor RT accelerator to be more and more important because usually these frameworks are developed for inference when the model has been deployed. But now we're seeing the inference be a part of the training loop as well in this teacher-student model distillation paradigm. From their paper, the researchers at Facebook give these six guideline recommendations for large-scale semi-supervised learning. So the first idea is really interesting, this uh, teacher-student model distillation paradigm. Also really interestingly and uniquely in this paper is that they're going to test model distillation when the student and the teacher have the same architecture or the same capacity. The second idea is to fine-tune the model with true labels only. This is a pretty intuitive idea. The uh, weekly supervised label data set has a ton of noise in it compared to the ImageNet data set or you know, other more specific labeled data sets. A third idea is that large-scale unlabeled data is key to this performance. Uh, naturally, the uh, key driver behind this algorithm is that they have a billion images from Instagram that they're using to train this model. The fourth idea is really interesting that they use a large number of training iterations for their pre-training with the weekly supervised learning compared to you know more pre-training iterations compared to normal supervised learning. The fifth idea is a novel contribution to this paper, the idea of having a balanced distribution for inferred labels. So when you're doing the uh, model distillation, you, want, you don't want to have class imbalance in the distribution of these labels. And the sixth idea is that pre-training the high capacity teacher model by weak supervision further improves the results. The idea of adding the weak supervised to make this the semi-weak supervised learning framework. Now we'll get into some of the results of their research report. You can check out their uh, repository on GitHub, semi-supervised ImageNet 1K models, where you have the uh, pre-trained models that you can load with uh, Torch Hub, and then they also present some of the results. You see the uh, semi-supervised learning framework, uh, different model architectures from ResNet 18 and 50 up to the ResNext uh, group convolution architectures, and then you see up to the 84.8% accuracy when using the semi-weekly supervised learning framework with 193 million parameters on the ResNex 101 32 by 16 d architecture. The first set of results they present shows the success of the semi-supervised uh, learning framework with different student models. So first we're looking at the ResNet 18, the ResNet 50, and then higher versions of the ResNex and the 50 101 higher capacity uh, ResNet variations. So we see that the uh, fine-tuned semi-supervised learning framework is always outperforming the fully supervised learning task when you just train the student model on ImageNet classification. Then they present this idea of varying the complexity of the teacher model and showing how increasing the capacity of the teacher model increases the accuracy of the student model. We see the gains are increasing every time as we scale up the capacity of the teacher model while holding the student model the constant. This plot shows the results when the teacher and the student model have the same architectural capacity. Interestingly, we still see these gains when we're using the uh, same capacity for each model. This plot shows how the uh, top one accuracy changes as a function of the unlabeled data, si data set size used as the, uh, you know, the unlabeled or the weekly supervised data in this pipeline. So we see that the performance continues to increase as the data set gets larger and larger, following the uh, recommendation from their guideline that uh, having massive unlabeled data sets is key to this framework. This plot shows how the accuracy improves as a function of the number of pre-training iterations. So as stated in their recommendations, they use a much larger amount of pre-training epochs than supervised learning epochs. Really interestingly is they're showing 4 billion uh, training iterations. It achieves the highest accuracy in this plot. Then they show the results of increasing the K parameter. So the K parameter uh, shown here is this idea of scoring the uh, class label distributions when you're doing the model, model distillation from the teacher network. So basically the idea is if you increase the K from say 8K to 16K, 
and then you're looking at a specific class such as leaf beetle. The, as you get towards the end of the 8K, and then especially from say 8,001 up to si the top 8,001 to the top 16,000, the images are gonna look less and less like beetles. They've just been assigned some probability as beetle, and now they're a part of the uh, balanced data set because you've increased this K parameter. So they show how there is a limiting effect to how uh, large you increase the K, because naturally as you increase the K past a certain threshold, you're making your uh, knowledge distillation data set for your student network to be really imbalanced. And deep learning, machine learning, these kinds of uh, decision boundary models do not respond well to class imbalance. Although they don't uh, show you like uh, things like random oversampling, a lot of the techniques commonly used to overcome class imbalance. This table shows the evidence of the uh, balancing of the distribution with these ablation studies such as uh, balancing the data set or unbalancing the data set showing a 0.8% accuracy improvement which is very significant for image net classification and then also the idea of using the uh, Instagram tags versus uh, ranking the list of the predicted distributions and then comparing all these performances to supervised learning. This table is the showing the, uh, the big highlights of the paper. You see they achieve 81.2% accuracy with the ResNet 50 ar uh, architecture and how this is state-of-the-art compared to previous uh, works trying to uh, achieve weekly supervised learning at the same model capacity. Then you can see the head-to-head -head comparison with their previous work on uh, you know, label engineering, the weak supervised learning, and sort of you do see how the accuracy starts to saturate at uh, the further model capacity of the ResNex architecture. Another really interesting characteristic of this framework is its success on transfer learning. So when they transfer this pre-trained model from ImageNet to the BIRD image classification model, they achieve a really high level of uh, transfer learning performance compared to previous approaches. This chart shows the difference between fine-tuning just the fully connected layer at the end of the network compared to the full network, and then the performance achieved after doing this. They also test this model on video classification with the uh, DeepMind Kinetics data set, and they show a significant improvement, uh, achieving 75.9% accuracy using this technique compared to the previous research, achieving 74.8% accuracy. Thanks for watching this presentation of semi-week supervised learning from Facebook's AI Research Lab. This research paper has presented a really interesting framework for semi-supervised learning and weekly supervised learning and in integrating this model distillation paradigm. There are some really interesting ideas presented in this paper, such as the importance of having a balanced class distribution for the uh, model distillation data set used to train the student network. Also interestingly is this idea of the importance of inference time when you're going to do the teacher's model to predict over billions of images to do model distillation. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.